but I want to make sure that we go over this one. So, guys, when you're looking at, remember when we're solving, okay? When we go back to solving anything for solve for x, solve for y, the whole basis of solving is isolating your variable, right? We want to get that by ourselves. Well, when it, we just had one variable x, it was very easy just to like undo your operations. You undid addition and subtraction, undid multiplication, undid squaring. Whatever was happening to the variable, you undid it. Um, but whenever we had two variables, we had to get some way to get them by ourselves. So what we did was we looked into factoring techniques to use the zero product property. And that's exactly what we're going to have to use here because if you notice, I can't solve for one cosine of x because I have multiple cosines of x. So what I'm going to have to look into is a factoring technique. Now, one way I can show this to you is without... Without these cosines, you guys can see that you can't just add the one over there and then solve for x, right? You're gonna have to use some sort of factoring technique. Well, I could factor this out. Uh, let's see here. So I'd probably have to multiply that by plus one or minus one. Nope. No. No? Correct. 2x. Yes. Okay. So I can go ahead and factor this, and if I factor this, the reason why factoring is so important, because when you have two terms and you're factoring, what you can now do is use the zero product property. Saying that if this times this equals zero, I can now set both of them equal to zero. And that's why factoring is so important, because now you have one variable in your equation that you can solve for. Does that make sense? So if you have two of your variables that you're trying to solve for, look for a factoring term. Look for factoring out the GCF, look for you know factoring trinomial, difference of two squared, whatever. Look to see if you can factor it. So I'm gonna use the same technique now just with cosines. I know it's a little bit more difficult, but really the numbers and everything are gonna remain the same. Rather than having a two x squared, I have a two cosine squared of x. So it's just gonna come two cosine of x minus one times cosine of x plus one equals zero. Okay, and again, if you look at this, Tessa, when you multiply this through, two cosine of x times cosine of x is going to provide you two cosine squared of x. Okay, so this does work. Now, just like over here, I can use a zero product property to say two cosine of x minus one equals zero and cosine of x plus one equals zero. Okay. So you added into two different solutions. I'm, yep, I'm going to have two different uh, solutions here. So I can add one, add one. Two cosine equals one. Divide by two, cosine of x. So I have cosine of x equals a positive one half, and I have cosine of x equals negative one. So now the next thing I need to look at is okay. So when are my values of x equal? to these two points. And remember, I the constraint of this problem was between uh, 0 and 2 pi. Right, that was our constraint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to my unit circle. And when does cosine of x equal negative 1? Remember, cosine represents your, neg your x values of any point on the unit circle. So if I look at it, well here, this point is negative one, zero. Where x is negative one and y is zero. There's no other point where x would equal negative one, right? right. So then I gotta look, where is, what is this angle to, to get to this point? Well, I can say x is now has to equal pi. Okay, I'm not gonna do the plus two pi because we have the constraint between zero and pi. Then the next thing I need to look at is when does cosine equal one half? Well, there's two points. This point right here, and yes. go ahead and one half, and then down right there. This point is comma one half radical square root of three over two, which is pi over three. And then the next point, which is one half comma negative radical three over two, which is five pi over three. So then x equals pi over three comma five pi over three. So therefore you're gonna have three answers that I'll just kind of leave like here with there. 
is, so the main important thing, guys, is you either using a factoring technique or just using your algebraic properties to solve for x or to get your you know, trig to solve for x, then find your value and then find which that value on your unit circle is going to provide you the angle that's going to give you your solution. Make sense? Any questions in general? Yes? Why did you attach the negative 1 to the 2 cosine x and not the cosine x? Why did I attach the negative 1? Yeah, why did you do 2 cosine x minus 1 instead of 2 cosine x plus 1? I mean, why did you choose to put the negative 1 there? And rather than doing plus yeah. one, negative one? Yeah. Or just plus one for both? No, just plus one and then negative one. Okay. Um, when I looked at the factoring, because if I changed it, like here, um, what I would notice is when I do my foiling, 2x times one would be a negative two, and one times x would be a positive one. That means my middle term would have been negative if I did it like that. So that's why I just did that in my head to look at that. Okay. okay?